Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. We're keeping it a buck is what I do. Thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Let's jump in. This is the second part of the Cheryl Swoops videography session. Rant session. The first part, if you saw it already, is about why she can't stand Caitlin Clark, in my humble opinion. The second part is a salute, 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 salute to Nancy Lieberman for absolutely destroying Cheryl Swoops on the Stephen A. Smith show. I only wish that that destruction had taken place on first take. Stephen A., can you please do this on first take where you're going to get your largest audience? And it won't look like first take is nothing more than a fluff piece to prop up certain people. I know what you really think. You've told us what you really think. You don't do it the way I would do it because I don't come and sit here and say, well, you know, I think Caitlin Clark is the rookie of the year or blah, 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 blah. But Angel Reese is doing great too. No, 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 no. There's levels to this, man. Caitlin Clark is here and everybody else is down here, including Angel Reese. Angel Reese ain't on Caitlin Clark's level. No chance in hell. No chance in hell. She is not even in the same fucking country, let alone zip code or area code. No different than when the Olympics things were, you know, when he was saying that the Olymp that the Caitlin Clark should be on the Olympic team. I'm not saying that other people don't deserve to be on the team, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. There was one person. Maybe two. Asia Wilson, Brianna Stewart. You could have cut every single person on that team to put Caitlin Clark on it. Nancy Lieberman agrees with that. But again, they're not going to publicly state, you should have cut this person on the. They're not going to do that. Let me do it. I wish they would. But Nancy Lieberman is sitting here as a supporter of the WNBA, a supporter of pushing the sport forward, someone who acknowledges that Caitlin Clark has changed the entire narrative about the WNBA as a sport. Is the product good? To me, still, no. Unless I'm watching Dallas play Indiana seven times. That's some exciting-ass shit. But as Caitlin Clark's Clark changed the conversation and changed the dynamic of the league? Absolutely. They're flying charter jets now. People are getting sneakers with their names on it. People are getting endorsement deals that they weren't getting before. The attention, the eyes are on the league. Even though it might just be to watch Caitlin Clark play whoever she's playing, they're getting attention because she's playing them. But this is what Nancy Lieberman said in the broadcast that she got the opportunity to do when Cheryl Swoops got pulled off that thing by whoever. She was definitely pulled off that, whether it was by the Dallas Wings or by the WNBA or a combination of both. She was pulled off, and Nancy Lieberman replaced her. And let's take a look at what Nancy Lieberman had to say in that particular game about Caitlin Clark. For the game. There were just hundreds of fans lined up. Oh, yeah. What Caitlin Clark has done for the game is, is generational. Stop it right there. Generational. Listen to that word, man. That is a word that you use for the, sm the, the most small percentage 
of professional athletes in the history of sports. We're not talking superstar. We're not talking star. We're talking crossover superstar. That's what we're talking. We're talking about this is Michael Jordan level. This is LeBron level. This is Kobe level. This is Larry Bird level. This is Magic Johnson level. This is gener a generational star. Gener I mean, that word holds weight coming from a Hall of Famer. Holds serious, serious weight. Generational. But let's continue. And I just, as a, as a baller to a baller, I just want to say thank you to you, Caitlin Clark. Let's stop it again right here. Can you imagine being, I mean, she's 66 years old. The, the accomplishments that Nancy Lieberman had as a player, as a coach. Um, she played in WNBA when she was 50. It was one game, but she played when she was 50. Are you, I, I mean, she played nine minutes in a game when she was 50 years old. She played 25 games in 1997. She was 41. I think. Am I, am I, is my math correct? Sorry, 39. She was 39 playing in the freaking WNBA. That was the beginning of that was the that was that was the, at, the, at the beginning of the WNBA. But like this woman is is a Hall of Famer. She's and, and it's the sad. That's what makes it so sad for the Cheryl Hoops thing because she's a Hall of Famer too. She should appreciate this, but she doesn't. Absolutely. For just lifting our game up, you and so many great players. But what you're doing, you're going to make all. Think about that. Lifting our players up. Listen to the like these 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 comments are, are serious. Lifting our players up. Did you know who DJ Carrington was before she fouled Caitlin Clark? Did you know who Kennedy Carter was before she fouled Caitlin Clark? Did you know who half these women were before they got involved with trying complaining, fouling, and or complaining about Caitlin Clark? No, nobody did. Again, let me let me re rephrase. Not nobody, but the vast majority had no idea who they were. Vast majority. She's uplifted players that no one knew. She's brought attention to players that no one knew. I knew who Arike Agumbawale was. Excuse me. I knew who Arike Agumbawale was in Notre Dame. I saw her play in Notre Dame. She was badass. Arike Agumbawale, when she's played against the Indiana Fever, has been box office. She's been incredible. And everyone saw it because she was pay playing Caitlin Clark. So if you didn't know who Arike Agumbawale was, you now do. And it's because of Caitlin Clark. Think about that for a second. A player of that level. And Arike Agumbawale is an all-star level player. A better player than DJ Carrington. A better player than Kennedy Carter. And she has benefited from Caitlin Clark. Asia Wilson has benefited from Caitlin Clark, no matter how much she doesn't like it. They've all benefited from Caitlin Clark. Sabrina Ionescu has benefited from Caitlin Clark. Every Angel Reese has benefited, benefited from Caitlin Clark more than any player in the league. But people knew who she was. I'm talking largely people that, that people had no idea who these players were. People knew who Sabrina was, but... For the, long, for the most part, so many players, you didn't know who the hell they were. And then you saw them play Caitlin Clark. You're like, shit, dude, she's good. Like, I remember Tina Charles when she was at UConn. Tina Charles is like 35 years old, and she's still killing it. When they played against Indiana, she was dominant, 35 years old. Really still top shelf. Let's keep going. All these women multimillionaires one day, like Tiger did, like Mike. You just heard her say she's going to make all these women multimillionaires one day like Tiger did, like Michael Jordan did. But they want to fight it tooth and nail. Just let it ride the wave, man. Why are you fucking with your pockets? You are going to cost yourself so much damn money. Michael Jordan. 
Jordan did, and we shouldn't hate on her. We should celebrate her. That's a message to Cheryl Swoops, and we'll see more about that later on in this video. But that's a message to Cheryl Swoops, who she was sitting in her chair for, for this game. We should celebrate her. We should not hate on her. But yet what we're going to do is we're going to hate on her. We're not going to celebrate her. We're going to have players, players, past and present. Hell, Gino Ariema hating on her. Hating on her, not celebrating her. Don't ask me to celebrate somebody else when you, you won't celebrate the clear, most important player to the future of the WNBA. Let's keep going. I tolerate her. I'm not saying everybody's not going to be at the same talent level, but I'm saying that Caitlin Clark has just caught the attention of the world. She might be right now, uh, maybe her and Simone Biles, uh, you know, the most visible women athletes in the world right now. You heard that? You, you heard that? She just compared Caitlin Clark to Simone Biles, who is just coming off of the Olympics, who is the greatest Olympic gymnast, female gymnast champion in the history of the sport worldwide. That excerpt's coming from uh, Stephen A. Smith's show, and I'll pop it right back for you. And this is a good thing for sports. And internally, we can be women. We could be our worst enemies. We should embrace people who take us to another level. And she's done that, and it's proven from her collegiate days with TV, with jersey sales, with arenas being filled. Why wouldn't you want to ride that train to success? Because it will change your tax bracket, you know, incrementally uh, because of what she's doing. And there's so many great players like Asia Wilson. I don't care about Asia Wilson. <laughs> Asia Wilson's not changing anyone's tax bracket. Uh, Caitlin Clark's changing her tax bracket. And then you hear, you hear that. You hear her. Why would you not celebrate this? Why not? What is the problem? What do you so, what, why does it bother you so much? As I explained in my previous video that will post before this one, we know why. Because Cheryl Soups can't accept the fact that Caitlin Clark as a rookie is better than she was in the duration of her entire freaking basketball playing career. She hates it. She can't stand it. She's my unanimous MVP in this league. I don't think there's a player in the world right now better than Asia Wilson. And I would debate that. I would debate that topic. I think Caitlin Clark is just as good as Asia Wilson. Skill wise, I think she has more skills than Asia Wilson. I, I mean, Asia Wilson, if you want to keep it, keep it a buck. Asia Wilson, their team is worse this year with Asia Wilson having the best year of her career. They're worse this year than they were last year. She's having the best year of her career, and they're a worse basketball team. What does that tell you? It tells you that maybe she's taking too many damn shots. It tells you that maybe they're focusing on her a little bit too much and not enough on her team and sharing the wealth. But that's an opinion. I'm not going to argue with her. You have Jasia Wilson as the MVP. I'm not going to argue that. She deserves it. Oh, I'm sorry. She said, I, I used to use the word I, I don't like. Deserves. No, she's earned it. She's earned it. If she wins, she earned it. And she's probably going to win. But skill for skill? If we wanted to do a competition on skills, passing, dribbling, shooting, please. Caitlin Clark would wipe the floor with her in a skills competition. We got great rookies. In you and I have uh, discussed that, you know, there was this quote by Cheryl that said, you know. Oh, sorry for the chop. I, I, I just basically pieced this video together. So I just wanted to put it all in one spot. This is where she's talking about Cheryl Swoops where she actually made a phone call to Cheryl Swoops to speak to her, or Cheryl Swoops basically wouldn't speak to her for that matter. But she made a phone call to Cheryl Swoops. And this is how petty and sad of a human Cheryl Swoops is that she would not have a conversation with someone that she has a, a friend relationship with, someone who's trying to look out for her. Because at, the, at this point, at this point, Cheryl Swoops is just writing this 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 narrative because she she she's her ego is too large for her to apologize. 
for her to say, I was wrong. I was wrong. I've been wrong. And I've been doing what I'm doing because I got so much backlash that I figured I might as well just keep on because I'm getting crucified by everybody. So I might as well keep on doing it and ride this wave of attention. Caitlin was, you know, 25 years old. She was, uh, however old, 24 years old. She was a fifth year senior. Right. She was taking 40 shots a game. Her records were illegitimate. And I, I got off the treadmill and I called her as a friend. And I said, you know, you can say whatever you want. You can have your own opinion about anybody, but you do have to get the statistics right. I mean, facts matter. And if you just get ahead of this and just say, hey, I made a mistake on my numbers, then this thing is over and everybody respects you for your opinion. Exactly. 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 This is what an adult says, but Cheryl Swoops does what a 17-year-old child does. She acts like a clown. She acts like an infant. She acts like she has no sense. All of these things could have been deaded after Gil's arena if she had simply said, I'm, I made a mistake, I am sorry, which she still today has never done. She's never taken ownership of her, her lies. Lies. Because if it's not a fact, if it's not true, it's a lie. And she knew those number, those things weren't true. And the fact that, yes, facts and data matter. And when you're coming out here as a Hall of Fame basketball player in a sport that's not widely watched by most people, what do you think people who are watching this are going to say? They're going to sit here and say, oh, shit, Cheryl Swoops said it. This must be true. It must be true. And they get an opinion based on a lie, based on false information. They're, they formulate this opinion based on false information. And, you know, you might like Boston. I might like the Yankees. You know, it's okay Yankees, baby. to have difference of opinions. Well, she, she got upset with me on the phone. And I was like, Cheryl, you know, I'm not doing anything to hurt you. I'm just sharing. We're, we're talking. And so our relationship it, it pretty much it is not happening at this point. I tried to talk to her at the final four. Right. She didn't want to talk to me. Uh, my life's going to be good or great with or without Cheryl Swoops in my life. I'd rather have her in it. But let me tell you the difference. Think about that for a second. This is a grown ass woman, 66 years old. Cheryl Swoops is probably about, I think she's like 52 or something like that. Can you imagine ending a friendship? Friendship, because I don't, we, we, people use the word friendship and friends and all that stuff. They use it in a, everyone uses it in a different kind of way, right? Some people, like kids, when they say everyone's their friend. Well, you're an adult, you know, who you have a, if you have like five friends, you probably have too many, um, like true friends. Right? You might have too many because there's very few people that you can truly trust. In your life, you would presume your spouse, your parents, but as far as anyone beyond that, your spouse and your parents, you can't even trust your kids. Your kids will lie to you all the damn time. I mean, shit. <laughs> but beyond that, that group, you might have a few people that you grew up with that you were friends with for a very, very long time. So I'm not going to sit here and say that Nancy Lieberman and Cheryl Swoops are besties or friends, really, for that matter. But they had a French, a friendly relationship. I'm sure Cheryl Swoops looked up to Nancy Lieberman when she was younger, as she is a Hall of Famer and a very well-known basketball player. But can you imagine ending a relationship with someone, any type of relationship, whether it's a friendly relationship, a business relationship, over you lying about someone publicly? You lied. They called you to give you the advice of you shouldn't lie about someone. You should apologize because it's a bad look for you. And rather than have this fester on, if you say sorry and apologize for it and, and, and acknowledge that you, you were mistaken 
and all that stuff. You deaden it right there, and you don't look like some bitter ass Betty who is just so butt hurt over the fact that this young woman is just so much better than you were as a basketball player. And you would end a relationship over that. You won't speak to her at the final four. Well, as she said, her life is fine without you. You're not anything that helps or hinders her life. So she couldn't care less. You probably lost more than she lost by her not speaking to you. You've also lost your self-respect as a, as someone that people would respect for basketball knowledge because at the end of the day, and I refuse to live in this world of someone has more knowledge than me in basketball. I think I got more knowledge than anybody in basketball, except for probably LeBron James because he's an encyclopedia. But I will challenge my knowledge of basketball against anybody. I don't give a damn. You probably tell me I'm crazy. I don't care. I believe what I believe about myself. I know what my opinions are. I know how I think about things. I know I'm very, very analytical. I was coaching players when I was 16 years old even though I wasn't as good as them, but I could show them what to do, things that I couldn't do, right? Sounds crazy, but it helped them. And I did coach seven years of travel basketball, 17-year-olds, and helped many, many high school basketball players play Division I basketball, a few who are playing professionally around the world. All that said, you ruin a relationship over this? You don't, you, you're that mad? That's pathetic, man. But let's continue. Right. The difference is when the Kennedy Carter thing happened and I'm doing Michelle Beadle's uh, sh- uh, podcast with uh, Lou Williams and Chandler Par- Parsons. And Michelle says to me, Nancy, what would you tell Caitlin Clark in that situation? And I said to Michelle, look, I'm not here to speak for Caitlin Clark. You know, Caitlin Clark, I- I'm not going to tell you that. Then she said, what would you do if somebody kind of blindsided you like that? And you know me, I'm straight from New York, straight from Rucker Park. I said, I would have <laughs> yes. gotten up. I would have walked up to whoever did that to me. I would have punched him in the, the face. And you know the explicative that I used. And I would have said, yes. you know, F off. I love that. I absolutely love that. She just told you that if what was done to her, was done to Caitlin Clark, was done to her, she did not Kennedy Carter upside her mouth, which is exactly what I think Caitlin Clark should have done. She did not her upside her mouth. She's like the New York in me, Rucker Park, all that stuff. <laughs> I done knocked you upside your mouth. But let's continue because this is where it gets absolutely ridiculous. That is who I am. That is the concentric circle of who I am. And, and that's my era. And so, and so to her point, Teresa Weatherspoon called me, my dear friend who I love, respect, and admire. She said, Nancy, I was disappointed what you said. And we had a a conversation and I said, Spoon, I didn't say she should punch Kennedy Carter in her face. I said, this is what I would do if I were blindsided and, and I've known Kennedy since she was in high school here in Dallas. I think she's a hell of a player right. and should have been on the all-star team. She is. But my comment about hitting her wasn't about her. But we had this conversation, which I, we apparently cannot have with me and Cheryl Swoops. And I still think she, she mm. was incorrect about what she did. And, you know, we all have to be professional. Right. You cover people. Right. You and Durant have kind of gone at it. All right. Sorry about that. She even brought up Stephen A. Smith and his back and forth with Kevin Durant. They still speak. He still covers him. But think about it. She just called Cheryl Swoops unprofessional, which she is completely unprofessional. But let me let's talk about that Teresa Weatherspoon thing for a second. Because can you imagine the fact that Teresa Weatherspoon had the audacity to call Nancy Lieberman and say she was disappointed that Nancy Lieberman said that? I'm more disappointed that Teresa Weatherspoon thought that what Kennedy Carter did was okay. This is not the park. This is professional basketball. I'm more disappointed that the people on her sideline were cheering when that shit was done. Again, 
We're not at a park. We're at a professionals. They're professionals here. So you're disappointed that a professional made a comment critique, saying what she would have done if it had been her. And you know what? Who gives a damn if it wasn't that she said that Caitlin Clark should have done? What, what if she did say it? Caitlin Clark should have knocked her upside her head. What difference does that make? Why are you bothered by that? Teresa Weatherspoon, if someone did that to you, would you get up and walk away? No, you are a pit bull. You probably would have gotten into a fight. But you know what? What? what you know what? That never would have happened to you because you never had to deal with the level of hate and vitriol and vile from the your from your from your contemporaries in the WNBA due to absolute jealousy and disdain for a player that you know is better than you in every way. And that is what it all comes down to. She's better than them in every way, and it pisses them off. And Nancy Lieberman kept it a buck, like she should. Because what are we doing? Why are you uplifting this game? Why are people so afraid? Why are people so afraid of it? Like, like if you're bothered in year one about Caitlin Clark, imagine what it was like to play against Michael Jordan, who got got his balls blown everywhere he went. Imagine what it's like to be on the same team with LeBron James, where LeBron is God, and the rest of y'all are just on the team. Like, think about that. And y'all are you're so bothered. I love what Nancy Lieberman did. I love the fact that Stephen A. Smith had her on the show. I would have loved to have had her as a guest to interview her because, oh, my God, I could have talked to her, that woman, for like two hours. That would have been a ball, absolute ball. So salute to you, Nancy Lieberman. Salute to you, Stephen A. Smith, for bringing her on and for having some backbone to come back at Cheryl Swoops about the bogus crap where she calls you a coward. Don't bring her on her your shows. She doesn't deserve it. She does not deserve. There's that word again, deserve. She does not. She has not earned it. She has not earned that right to be at a table with you to talk about this stuff because she won't even give people who are her friends the respect, her friends, the respect of listening to what they have to say when they're trying to help her. Don't help her. Let her keep digging her grave. She's going to get fired. The WNBA is going to fire her. It's a matter of when. It might not be during this season, but I can imagine that she will not be back as a commentator next year because of what's going on. It's embarrassing for them. Their most popular, most beloved, most watched, most everything player, you won't say a positive word about. You won't acknowledge her existence. It's freaking sad. And you're ruining your career. You're going to ruin your anything you got left of a career because we already know that you were a scumbag head coach. You were a scumbag of a head coach at Loyola. Where 10 of your 12 players left because you were such a fucking bully tyrant. Reality check. Cheryl Swoops is not a good person. She's not. She was a, a, a horrific college basketball coach with her name. She could not get players. They all left her ass, and she was fired in three years. I think she was 31 and 62 as a coach. You, mu you must not know that much basketball, Cheryl. And yeah, Caitlin Clark is still better than your sorry ass. I got nothing left for this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, subscribe, and follow. What are your thoughts on Nancy Lieberman, Lieber, Lieberman's uh, comments? I I'd love to hear your opinions on that. Ring that bell. I love all y'all. Come on now.